what is the gospel? How can I become a Christian? What must I do to be saved? These are the questions that we're going to be addressing in this video. And trust me, you're not going to want to miss this. Hey everybody, my name is Mickey and welcome to Let's Talk About the Bible. I hope that you are ready and excited to talk about the Bible with me today because that is what we do here. In fact, that's pretty much all we do here. We talk about the Bible and today we're going to be spending our time, short time together, talking about the gospel. What is the gospel? I don't have any notes with me today. I normally have notes prepared for all my videos. I don't have any notes with me today because all I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be explaining to you the gospel message in very simple terms, hopefully terms that each and every one of you can understand. So... This video is really for two different kinds of people. For me, for the Christian, any, anybody who's a Christian, I see the world through, through my lens, the way I see the world. There are two types of people. There are people who know Christ and there are people who don't know Christ. There are believers and there are unbelievers, right? That's how I see the world. And this video is primarily for those who do not know Jesus. This video is primarily for unbelievers, for those who are not Christians. However, I think this video can also be for those who are Christians and for those who do know Christ because maybe something that I say or the way that I explain and articulate the gospel, maybe it'll help you know how to better explain and articulate the gospel because if you're a Christian, you need to know how to share the gospel with people. You need to know and understand the gospel message and be able to explain it in a way that other people understand. So what is the gospel? What's the gospel? Well, very simply, the gospel is the story of Christianity. It is the message of Christianity. It is what we believe. The gospel is really the Bible, like the entirety of the scriptures from beginning to end. The Bible is the story of Christianity. The gospel is the story of Christianity. So really the Bible is the gospel. Okay, that's the gospel is the Bible. The Bible is the gospel. But to be more specific, this is the gospel message. This is it right here. God created the world. That's how the Bible starts. Genesis chapter one, verse one says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created everything and he created everything in it, right? Including humanity. And God created everything perfectly. Our world was perfect. Our world was perfect holy. It was, it was faultless. It was sinless. God created a perfect world with perfect people. And he was in relationship with those people. It says he walked in, in the garden of Eden with them. That's where man lived when he first created us was in this place called the garden of Eden. It says God walked with him and talked with him and they had a personal relationship with each other. But we ruined that. Humanity fell into sin, okay? When I say sin, because I'm going to say sin a lot, that word, all sin means is disobedience to God or rebellion against God. So humanity disobeyed God. Humanity rebelled against God. We sinned. And ever since that moment when we sinned, a couple of things happened. Number one, we were separated from God. Because you have to understand, we serve a God who is holy. We serve a God who is perfect. And he cannot have anything to do with sin by his very nature because of who he is and because of what sin is they can't have anything to do with each other sin and god are mutually exclusive okay so god had to kind of take a step back he couldn't have a personal relationship with us anymore because of the sin in our lives that's the first thing that happened the second thing that was ha that happened was everything became infected by sin, not just humanity, but the entire world fell into a state of brokenness, right? The world was no longer a perfect creation. So today there are all kinds of horrible things that happen in our world. And that is because of sin. Everything is a result of sin. And because the very first people that God created sinned, they passed that sin down to each and every one of us. Every human being who has ever lived or will ever live is a sinner. None of us are perfect. We have all disobeyed God or rebelled against God in some way, shape, or form. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 in the Bible says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you're, if you're not aware, all, that word all, that includes you. And that includes me. We are all sinners. We have all fallen short. In fact, David tells us in Psalm chapter 51, he says, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. He said, I was literally born a sinner. Sin is so ingrained in our nature and in who we are that like sin isn't even an act for us anymore. It is simply who we are. David said, before I even committed an act of sin, I was a sinner because that is who we are as humans. Part of our nature is to be a sinner. We have sinned against God. We've rebelled against him. We've disobeyed against him. And because of that sin, we can't have a relationship with him. But also because of that sin, we deserve death. Now, that sounds harsh. That sounds horrible. But that's what scripture says. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 in the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Wages is simply a payment right? What you earn or what you deserve because of what you've done. So because of sin, the wages of sin is death. So if you're a sinner, you deserve death. 
Now, when we talk about death, I'm not talking about physical death itself, because obviously each and every one of us are going to physically die. I'm not saying if you can find a way to get around sin, you can stay alive forever. That's not what death we're talking about. We're talking about spiritual death, which essentially means eternal separation from God, eternal separation from God, because God is the source of life itself. So death is eternal separation from God. Okay, being separated from the source of life itself forever. We call that place hell. That's what the Bible and that's what us Christians call that place. Hell is a place where you go when you die and you are eternally separated from God. And that is what we deserve as Christians, and not Christians, humans. That's what we deserve as humans because we're all sinners. And because we sin, we deserve to pay the price for sin. We deserve death. That is the payment we deserve. And let me break it to you. This may sound somber. This may sound like bad news, and it is bad news. There's nothing we can do. Nothing we can do to avoid sin. Nothing we can do to not be a sinner. And there's nothing we can do to pay the price for our sins outside of death and outside of eternal separation from God. On our end, there's nothing we can do. But guess what? On God's end, he made a way. And this is what's so cool about the gospel. This is what's so cool about our faith is the fact that pretty much like the, the highest honor that we could have is to have a personal relationship with our creator, the God of the universe, the one who created everything, the, the master of the universe, the one who creates and sustains everything. Like that's the highest honor and achievement that man could possibly achieve. And we should want that. There's really no reason God should want a relationship with us. There's nothing he needs from us. There's nothing he gains from having a relationship from us. Like God is so awesome and so perfect and so holy. Like there's nothing we can do for him. Yet God wanted a relationship with us so much so that he made a way for that to be possible. What he did was he sent his son, Jesus. Now I know this is kind of confusing because Jesus is the son of God, but Jesus is also God. He's God But he's also the son of God because we believe in a trinity, which means one God in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are all equally God. I know that's kind of confusing. But Jesus, the son of God, came to earth and became one of us. He became just like me and you. He put on flesh and he lived a life as a human being, the exact same kind of life that me and you are currently living. The only difference was that Jesus lived a perfect life. Jesus lived a life completely free of sin. He lived a sinless life, which we can't even fathom because I sin every minute of every single hour of every single day. So do you because we're humans. But Jesus, because he was God, He was able to live a perfect, sinless life. And because he was man, he was able to die. Now we say, why? Why would he do that? Why did he he die? Well, he died because what's the payment for sin? The payment for sin is death, right? The wages of sin is death. And so Jesus paid the price for us, for our sins. Jesus died on the cross. He was crucified by the Roman government. And on that cross, he took the weight of the sins of the world on his shoulders and he paid the price for our sins so that we would not have to. Jesus traded with us in a way, right? Jesus said, look, y'all are guilty. I am innocent. So I will take y'all's guilt upon myself and I'll pay the price for that and I will give y'all my innocence. He swapped with us. We gave him our sinfulness. He gave us his sinlessness. We gave him our filthiness and worthlessness. He gave us his righteousness. That is the gospel. And guess what? It doesn't end there. Jesus died on the cross, and three days later, you want to know what he did? He rose from the dead. He came back from the dead. He defeated death. He defeated sin. He defeated Satan himself. And he came back to prove that he was who he said he was. And that he did exactly what he said he was going to do, which was save his people from their sins. That is the gospel. Now, why would God do that for us? Simply because he loves us. He loves us so much that he was willing to send his one and only son. That's what John 3.16 says. John 3.16 is probably the most famous verse in scripture. It says, for God so loved the world, us, that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, will not be eternally separated from God, but we will have eternal life in heaven with him. That's what's so cool. That's why we call it being saved because we have been saved from death to life. We've been saved from eternal separation from God to eternal fellowship with God. We don't have to go to hell when we die. We could go to heaven when we die and be with God forever, for eternity. That's what it means to be a Christian. That's the gospel, okay? 
Everything that I just explained to you is the gospel. Now, how do you become a Christian? What must I do to be saved? There are two very, very, very simple things you must do if you want to be a Christian today. If you're watching this video, listen, because this is what's important. The first thing is what we call faith. Faith is simply belief. When I say faith, all that means is you must believe in the gospel message. You must believe that every single part of it is true. Everything that I articulated over the first few minutes of this video, you must believe that those words are true. You must believe that you're a sinner and that you deserve to die for your sins and there is nothing you can do to save yourself from that punishment. Only God can save you from that and he did save you from that. He made a way. He sent his son Jesus, lived a perfect sinless life, went to the cross, died for our sins, paid the price for us that he didn't deserve to pay, that we did deserve to pay, yet he paid it for us because he loved us. Three days later, he rose from the dead. If you believe those things to be true, that's the first step. Faith. The second step is a word we call repentance. Repentance. Now, that word simply means a change of mind. Repentance means a change of mind. So essentially, repentance means you've been living your life a certain way for the entirety of your life. Some of you may be 12, some of you may be 25, some of you may be 50. I don't know how old you are, but for the entirety of your life, you've been living your life in a certain way. And the way you've been living your life is for you, right? You've been living your life for you. I'm not saying that that makes you a horrible person. I'm just saying that makes you a human. That makes you a sinner, right? You've been living your life for you. You do what you want to do. You call the shots. You've taken charge. You're the boss, right? Once you realize and understand the truth of the gospel, we now understand, I don't really want to do that anymore, right? I don't want to be in charge. I don't want to call the shots. I don't want to be the boss. I want God to be in charge. I want God to call the shots. I want God to take charge in my life. And we must surrender our lives to him so that he can use us. God wants to use us in mighty, mighty, mighty ways for the glory of his great name. It's so amazing that God would give us the privilege of being able to be used by him. The creator of the universe wants to use us, right? It's so cool, but it requires repentance. That means I can't continue to live my life how I want to live it. I now have to live my life how God wants to live it. Those are the two things that are required of you if you want to be a Christian faith and repentance. That is it. And the reality is faith is really the only requirement, right? Romans chapter 10 verse 9 in the Bible says, if we, sorry, wrong verse. It says, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. Okay. So that says, if we believe in our hearts that Jesus died for our sins and he rose from the dead, and if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, right? If we say Jesus is Lord, that means Jesus is the boss, Jesus in charge. If we confess that with our mouth, that Jesus runs the show now, I do what he wants me to do, not what I want to do. And if we believe in our hearts that he died for our sins and raised from the dead, then we will be saved. It's as simple as that. We just must believe in the gospel. Really, repentance is more of the proof of true faith more than it is a requirement, really. I just included it because faith isn't real unless repentance comes along with it. James chapter 2 tells us in the Bible, he tells us that faith without works is dead dead. If you have faith with no repentance, no works, nothing to show for it, then that's not real faith. It's dead faith. We, it takes true faith to become a Christian, true faith in God, and all true faith will be followed by and accompanied with repentance, a turning away, a changing of mind. I say, I'm not going to live for myself anymore. I'm going to live for God. Doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect. I'm still going to be a sinner. Every single day I'm going to sin, but God knows that I've truly surrendered my life to him and I want him to use me in whatever way he sees fit. And I do my absolute best to live for him, to live by his commands, to do what he wants me to do, not what I want me to do. That's the gospel. That's how you become a Christian. That's how you can be saved. It, it, it's, it's as simple as that. It seriously is as simple as that. There's not really anything you have to do. You just have to believe. You just have to believe that God loves you so, so, so much that he would send his son to die for you and pay the price for your sins. Okay? That is the gospel, and that is what it takes to be saved. Now, this is what I want you to do. Okay? If you are an unbeliever and you watch this video and, and, and maybe you were led to a faith in Jesus Christ and a relationship with Jesus. That's the coolest part, right? Being a Christian means you have a relationship with Jesus. We're able, I told you, sin separated us from God, but once we believe in the gospel, we're reunited again. We're restored to God. We're reconciled to God and we can have a personal relationship with him, okay? So this is what I want you to do. I don't know exactly. I'm gonna put my an email address up on the screen right here, okay? You're gonna see it right now. I don't know the name of it because I haven't even made it yet, but I'm gonna make an email. And what I want you to do is if you have made a decision for Jesus, 
I want you to email me and let me know, right? You can let me know down in the comments, but if you email me, it will ensure that I read it and that I'm going to respond to all of those that I get, okay? So, I want you to email me and email me anything, okay? This is gonna be, uh, for all of my future videos, it's gonna be a place where people can email me and ask questions, people where you can email me for prayer requests so that I can pray for you or whatever it may be. I know I don't know you personally, but I want to rejoice along with you that you have put your faith in Jesus. If you heard this and you're still, you know, a little on the fence, you have some concerns or some questions, then email me, let me know. I will do my absolute best to answer those as soon as I can. I will be continuing to make videos on this channel about the Bible. We're going through the Gospel of Matthew right now, so you can continue to stick around and watch those videos. And I'm gonna continue to make videos about the gospel, right? What to do next if you're a new believer. If you're a Christian, what can I do? What, what, what do I need to do? What is my life? Need? Things like that. We're going to continue to do things like that on this channel. So I hope that you enjoyed. I hope this video was beneficial for you. If you're a believer or an unbeliever, please share this video with anyone who needs to hear it because every single human being needs to hear the gospel, needs to hear the truth of what Jesus has done for us and what he has accomplished for us, the price that he has paid for us and the love that he has shown for us, okay? Come back soon for some more videos on the Bible, some more videos on the gospel of Matthew. And don't forget, never stop talking about the Bible. Peace.